Over the years, I've enjoyed experimenting with every kind of photo technique I could learn about, but I really love the back to basics, stripped away format that mobile photography allows. It forces you to look at things in new ways and experiment with techniques you might not try if you're using a full DSLR camera. If anything, using a real big camera makes me personally lazier and more likely to settle into less creative habits. Shooting road trips and street park cars and impromptu moments with my phone taught me so much of what I know and what I love about photography. The limitations forced me to find creative perspectives and new ways to depict a scene. We all know that you can take a bad photo with a great camera, but the inverse is true as well. It's possible with the right set of conditions to take a photo on your phone that, you know, viewed on a small screen is just as good as what a $7,000 Leica could shoot. I'm gonna to try to show you how to find those conditions and maximize the opportunities. I'll show you some tricks to get more out of your mobile photography shots, and I'm excited to be demonstrating this with the 2021 Lexus LC500, which I think is one of the most stunning looking cars on sale today. Some of the limitations of your phone camera. Uh, bad and low light, flat, no depth of field, no telephoto zoom. I try to work around these constraints by shooting in the best possible natural light early or late in the day and finding perspectives that don't rely on a long lens or dramatic depth of field. More tips for overcoming those limitations. If you have to shoot in the middle of the day, find an environment with some shade or interesting shadows. The camera usually does pretty well with detail shots. Uh, if you have the 2X camera, it gives you a truer picture with less distortion, but it's worse in low light, so be careful of that. The camera in your phone also does a pretty good job managing the settings, but be sure to turn off HDR and learn how to control the exposure level. I would much rather underexpose a scene than overexpose. Um, I think it looks richer and it's easier to recover. When you think of photographing a car, you usually think of the most straightforward approach simply showing what's there. By looking for more and finding a fresh way of looking at the scene, that's gonna help you take more captivating, surprising images that viewers will be more likely to engage with. When someone sees a photo taken at eye level, they tend to skip over it, like it doesn't even register because we're all so used to looking at things from that perspective. By changing your viewing angle to really high or really low, you can show something new, maybe something that the viewer isn't used to seeing. This is a great way to also keep bad distractions out of your frame. So find some elevation. If you can stand up higher to look down on your subject, uh, I use light poles, stairs, hydrants, planters, anything I will stand on. Details look different from above, cars look different from above. Also, you can try getting low. Automotive photographers typically crouch low to shoot cars to make them appear heroic. It lowers the roof line visually and makes it appear more purposeful and imposing. But if you get even closer, so close that you're looking straight up at the car, or if you're shooting with your phone, you can turn it upside down and get the lens right on the ground, um, which you can't even do with an SLR. You can't have the lens like in the grout and that will change how that looks. You can make that grout or that pavement or that crack like a compositional element. The phone will do a decent job shooting the whole car, but with these hardware limitations we talked about, you need to bring something else to the composition if you wanna make an interesting photo. This is why the framing is so important. Sometimes the background is just as important as the subject. The scene and the car can be inseparable. Look for color, linear similarities, or other characteristics that draw them together. Try making the car really small to show scale. Finding a wide setting free of ugly distractions and noise is challenging, so if you come across that, show it off and make use of it by showing how grand the scene is. You can use these limitations to make something more interesting. If you don't have the benefit of a wide expanse, crop in just on the part you do like and hide everything else. Um, some more guidelines. Avoid the obvious. Asymmetry is always more interesting than symmetry and consider the rule of thirds. Put your focal point off-center to create visual movement. 
give the subject room to breathe. Um, never frame the car edge to edge. It's bad. It can be challenging with shooting cars to have something else in the foreground because usually you're surrounded by pavement. Uh, but by getting creative, looking around and moving yourself or the car, you can create unique compositions that will provide foreground interest, obfuscation, or abstraction. Plants, grass, railings, fence posts, and more can be used to punch up a scene and create something unexpected. Any of this can be applied to anything, definitely not just limited to cars, and hopefully it gets you thinking and looking at things a little differently. As with anything, these rules are meant to be broken. Change your perspective. Framing is critical. Put something between you and the subject. And as you can probably take away from this, I am a firm believer that your camera doesn't really matter and mobile photography is a great way to explore the medium of photography and push yourself to rely on your eyes instead of your gear. You just remember, the camera doesn't matter as much as what you do with it. Thank you for watching. Uh, I'll see you next time. Please rate or comment or share this if you like it. And if there's anything you want to see me cover, um, let me know and I'll try to get to it. You wouldn't take a shot of just like a highlight only like this with a normal camera because you'd be like further away. Like, oh, I'm gonna get another shot of the whole car. <laughs>